What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be giving you a quick scope review. We're gonna be talking about the Trigicon 1 to 4 by 24 Ascent. Before we do that, as always, wanna mention the Patreon supporters, thank you guys very much. You guys make the channel possible, appreciate all your support, and because of that, we hit you with some exclusive content. If you want to sign up, all you gotta just go to the link in the description. Also in the description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa, it's the YSS. These kids could use your help, so please go down and donate. Now the Trigicon uh, 1 to 4 Ascent is kind of a niche scope. A scope that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about. So I'm a big fan of Trigicon. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the channel. If you are, you'll know that Trigicon is one of my favorite optics manufacturers, anywhere from the RMR to the SRO to the AccuPoint to the ACOG, on and on it goes. I have at least half a dozen uh, different Trigicon optics. So when the Ascent came out and nobody was really talking about it, I wanted to get a sample for review, so I talked to my buddy Cal over at Optics Planet and he sent one over for me, appreciate that, and I got to take it through the review process and see how it fares. As you see here, it is actually a relatively lightweight uh, yet rugged scope, which is kind of the purpose of it. The idea behind it is a one to four, is four magnifications good enough to get you to 300 yards, relatively easy, target identification, all that stuff, but it's still small enough and lightweight enough to where it doesn't end up being so cumbersome on a handy little rifle or pistol, for example, like this 11.5 BCM pistol, which just happens to be my favorite, which is one of the reasons why I use it for optics testing, because it just gives me an excuse to go out and shoot it. That being said, if you're gonna be outfitting a 10.5, 11.5, or 14.5 inch rifle of some kind, a shorter barreled pistol or rifle, a one to four is a really good option because it allows you to reach out and touch something without having so much weight that the gun becomes un unwieldy. The overall weight on this is only 16 ounces, and if you use one of these Aero Precision lightweight mounts, the whole co the whole gun ends up coming out with only about 18 ounces of extra weight, which is really nice for the magnification that this allows you. Uh, very lightweight, very rugged. That's one of the nice things about Trigicon is you don't ever have to worry about breaking them, really, because they are built tough. And as you can see here, this one's got marks all over it uh, because we weren't nice to it. When we were playing around with it, we purposely we threw it on the ground a bunch of times and uh, see if we could break it and obviously nothing broke or I would be telling you about it right away. Uh, the uh, zoom dial here is a little bit tougher than my AccuPower but that's because this is a budget-minded scope. Coming in from Trigicon uh, with a price of only $500 makes it one of its most affordable magnified optics. Trigicon is not a budget company. Uh, they make bomb-proof stuff and they get bomb-proof prices. So this is budget-minded from them and it is meant to keep up with things like the Vortex uh, line, like the Strike Eagle and stuff like that. And I think it does a pretty good job. It's got one to four magnification, which gets you out to 300 yards. It's got quarter MOA adjustments, which makes it very precise and it's overall a zero you can achieve, which is really nice. The overall length of the scope is only 10 inches, so it doesn't actually take up that much rail space. If you can see here from the receiver to the scope, there's only a couple of inches past the uh, receiver, so you could run this on relatively short barreled pistols or rifles really easy and still have enough rail space to put a night vision device or a light or a backup iron sight all that fun stuff that you're gonna use for your force multipliers. The field of view on this at 100 yards is 95 feet, that's pretty good. And it does have a ballistic drop compensated reticle in it. Uh, so for a guy like me who doesn't particularly like to spin dials and I just like to use the ballistic reticle, that works really well for me. One of the biggest downsides of the scope is gonna be even though it's coming in at $500, it doesn't have an illuminated reticle, which I will admit does kind of suck. However, it's not really geared toward that. Like if you want an illuminated reticle, you can get the AccuPoint, which is going to come in at about double the cost and be similar features, and it does have a illuminated reticle. The AccuPower and the AccuPoint line both have illuminated reticles. This one does not because they're trying to lower the cost. The reticle itself worked really well up close and at distance. We even shot this scope at night just to see how it would fare without an illuminated reticle, and believe it or not, it worked relatively well. I was able to shoot relatively quickly and effectively even at night in pitch black. Now, if you 
were using this for home defense or something like that, using a weapon light in a dark room, I think you would be fine even with this scope considering I had no issues with it. However, I do shoot a lot at night, so I do have some practice at that. That being said, most situations like that don't occur in total darkness, so it does have an etched black reticle on it, so you're gonna be fine there. And uh, the, there's a real myth around uh, optics where one power optics can't be used as quickly as red dots. Uh, maybe not quite as fast, but pretty damn close and close enough to where it's gonna be up to the skill level of the shooter, not so much the equipment. The cap turrets are really nice and uh, the adjustments are accurate, so that's really good as well. When you go with a high quality company like Trigicon, not only are you gonna get that lifetime warranty, but you're gonna get a high quality of build as well, so the durability of the optic should last you your lifetime. If you get a high quality optic like Leopold or Trigicon or Vortex or something like that, you should have an optic that lasts you a lifetime because that's what you pay for. And if it doesn't, then you should just go gone with a cheaper option in the first place. So I expect these to be durable, especially for the price that they are. I think this scope would be really good as a hunting scope, especially a deer hunting scope on something like a 350 Legend. That's, if it sounds oddly specific to you, that's because that's what I bought it for. I bought it to use for a deer rifle. This year when I go deer hunting, I have. 350 Legend from Johnson Guns and More, an upper that I'm going to be using this on, and we're going to be seeing how this does. And all of that is, takes place during the day, so an illuminated reticle should not be an issue. I also think it would make a pretty good Plinken scope, home defense scope, but overall, a kind of a bug out minded, very durable option. You know, if you're looking for a scope that's lightweight, rugged, and you have no need for illuminated reticle, this is going to be one of the best options for you. However, there's a lot of scopes on the market that will match the features of this scope and it will have an illuminated reticle, particularly coming from Vortex and uh, other companies like that, Riton and stuff like that. For a similar price, you're gonna get more features. However, you're not gonna get the brand name. You're probably not gonna get the long-term durability or the extreme light weight of this. So it really is a trade-off and you're gonna have to decide whether or not that illuminated reticle is extremely important to you or not. Uh, I have found that it's not too big of an issue for me. A lot of times when I shoot scopes, I don't even turn them on. However, that being said, I would not trade my Trigicon AccuPoint for this because I don't have to turn my Trigicon AccuPoint on. It's on all the time. So that's one thing you have to remember that if you have $800 to $1,000, I would certainly upgrade to the AccuPoint or AccuPower series. But if you only have $500, this is a really good way to go. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.